Welcome to Web Handling. My name is Dave Roysom. In this clip, we continue our series of successful baggy web troubleshooting case histories. Here, we up the complication a bit by having more than one raw material and more than one process. While this might seem to be more complicated, it offers some unique troubleshooting techniques that may offset the additional complications. The product and process are ordinary enough. The film is coated with an adhesive and bonded to dead soft foil in a simple laminating nib. All three plies, and especially the adhesive, are thin. As a good problem solver, we begin downstream at the customer. The customer, in this case, is an unwinding roll in the very next process. The complaint is vivid wrinkling coming off the unwinding roll that doesn't get any better as it proceeds downstream. The problem has been chronic since day one, that being when the coder laminator machine was installed. If we look just upstream, the winding roll looks okay at first glance. However, as we learned in Web 101, the most common cause of wrinkling may be bagginess and that bagginess is most often caused by a product not being level enough. If we look just upstream of the winder, everything else also looks okay. If we look and test the three components, film, foil, and adhesive, they all test within spec and do not exhibit any consistent or particular shape. Also, as we learned the hard way in the last clip, just because you can't see or measure a problem does not mean it's not there. Yet, we know that one of the elements in the system must own a shape, and that shape is tapered because the problem is always on the front side. Our job is to literally point to the offending element that owns the taper. That could be one of the three plies. Note, we always count an adhesive as a ply. It can also be the laminating nip. Once we figure out which element is crooked, we can immediately proceed to brainstorming. As we learned in Web 101, the most common cause of wrinkling may be bagginess and that bagginess is most often caused by the product not being level enough. We will proceed on that hunch. The challenge will be to do a series of several clever tests to reveal which element is not level enough in the product that causes the differential stretching when wound. Methodical thinking will save much time and trouble. Do not shortchange this step and especially don't start testing yet or jump to conclusions. What elements could reasonably own a taper shape? We already mentioned them, but let us list them formally here. These include the film, the adhesive, the foil, and the nip. Yet, at first glance, none of the elements seem to be a good candidate. The film comes from many suppliers and positions, so it would be difficult to say that all would provide material that is troubled on the front side. Yet, a much more telling test is to flip the supply roll over and unwind from the opposite side. No change in the front side trouble is observed. The film could not be a cause for those reasons. The adhesive is extremely thin, only a couple percent of the total laminate thickness. We know that from prior experience in many industries that it takes 1 to 10 percent variations in total thickness to cause troubles, so the math doesn't seem to work out to be enough. Finally, it is difficult to hide poor foil because it is easy to see imperfections in the shiny surface. Also, Foil from many suppliers and many positions seem to all have similar response, perpetual troubles on the front side. In this case, 
We can't flip the foil over without making an unsaleable product because most foil has a dull and bright side. Yet, one of these plies or the laminator nip must be responsible, so let us continue simple but telling testing. Let us next see if we can change or move the wrinkles by biasing the nip. First, we double the front side load and half the back side load. Next, we repeat with a heavy side on the back. No changes. It is very doubtful the nip is responsible because large changes in load cause no noticeable changes in wrinkling response. Finally, we bias the coder. Yippee! We see a noticeable change in wrinkling response. The hard part of troubleshooting is now done. Though the adhesive is very, very thin, tiny variations in thickness stretch the dead soft foil product when wound. Though the variations of coat weight are below the threshold of easy measurement, the coating is simply not level enough. Though this is a brand new state of the art coater, the coater as set up is simply not good enough for this product. However, for troubleshooting, we learn two super powerful tools for situations that are asymmetric. First, we could flip the supply rolls. Second, we can bias machinery. Thank you so very much for watching this module in my plant practical video series. Stay tuned as we continue our tour of successful BaggyWeb troubleshooting case histories.